The Denver Broncos head into their Week 3 matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a game that promises to be a thrilling contest. Battling a wave of injuries, the Broncos are facing significant challenges, key players are sidelined, and the team is feeling the pressure. The inactive list is lengthy, impacting key positions on both sides of the ball. This has forced the coaching staff to make tough decisions and rely on the depth of their roster. This Sunday's game will be a true test of the Broncos' depth and resilience. The team has been working tirelessly in practice, focusing on strategy and execution. Can Denver overcome these absences and secure a crucial victory on the road? The fans are hopeful and the players are determined to give their best performance. The Buccaneers, while facing their own challenges, boast a formidable roster. Their lineup is packed with talent and they are known for their aggressive play style. The Broncos will need to dig deep and rely on contributions from throughout the lineup. Every player will have to step up and play their part. Every snap will count as Denver seeks to exploit any vulnerabilities in the Buccaneers game plan. The coaching staff has been meticulously analyzing their opponents' weaknesses. The atmosphere at Raymond James Stadium is sure to be electric as these two teams clash in a pivotal early season matchup. Fans from both sides will be on the edge of their seats, eagerly anticipating every play. Let's break down the Broncos' inactive list and examine the potential impact on Sunday's game. Starting left tackle Garrett Bolas with an ankle injury is out, a significant blow to the offensive line's continuity. Bolas's absence will put pressure on his backup to step up and protect Russell Wilson's blind side. On the defensive side, the Broncos will be without starting defensive end Draymond Jones due to a knee injury and linebacker Josie Jewell with a hamstring issue. Jones's ability to generate pressure will be missed, potentially forcing the Broncos to rely more on blitzes. Jewell's absence leaves a void in the middle of the defense, requiring adjustments in coverage and run support. With Bully's sidelined, the Broncos will turn to veteran tackle Cameron Fleming to fill the void at left tackle. Fleming, a seasoned veteran, brings valuable experience to the position. However, the lack of consistent reps with the starting unit could pose a challenge against the Buccaneers' talented defensive front. The interior of the offensive line remains intact, providing some stability. Center Lloyd Cushenberry, guards Dalton Reisner and Quinn Miners, and right tackle Mike McGlinchey will need to elevate their play in Bolas's absence. Communication and cohesion will be paramount to ensure Russell Wilson has time to operate in the pocket. The Broncos' backfield depth will be tested with Javante Williams, dealing with a knee injury, listed as inactive. Williams, a dynamic playmaker, is still working his way back to full strength. This presents an opportunity for Samaji Perrine and Latavius Murray to shoulder the load in the run game. Perrine, known for his physical running style, will likely handle early down duties. Murray, a veteran with a nose for the end zone, could see increased touches in goal line situations. The Broncos will need both backs to step up and provide a consistent ground attack to alleviate pressure on the passing game. Section 5, Wide Receiver Room, Next Man Up The Broncos' wide receiver core remains relatively healthy, but the absence of Tim Patrick due to a hamstring injury will test the group's depth. Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy will need to shoulder the load as the primary targets in the passing game. KJ Hamler, known for his speed and big playability, could see an expanded role. Tight end Greg Dulcich, who has shown promise as a pass catcher, might also be called upon more frequently in the passing game. The Broncos will need to find creative ways to get their playmakers the ball in space against a stingy Buccaneers defense. Section 6, Tight End Depth Tested, a familiar challenge. The Broncos are facing a significant challenge at the tight end position. Greg Dulcich, one of their key players, is currently dealing with an ankle injury and is listed as questionable for the upcoming game. This injury has put the team in a precarious situation, as they are already thin at this crucial position. If Dulcich is unable to play, the Broncos will need to rely heavily on their reserve tight ends to step up and fill the void. These backup players have been preparing diligently, knowing that their moment to shine could come at any time. The coaching staff has been strategizing on the sidelines working on ways to integrate these players into the game plan effectively. One player who will likely see an increased role is blocking tight end Chris Manhurts. Known for his ability to protect the quarterback and create running lanes, Manhurts will be crucial in two tight end sets. 
His experience and skill set make him a valuable asset, especially in situations where the team needs to maintain a strong offensive line. In addition to relying on their current roster, the Broncos may also look to elevate a tight end from the practice squad. These practice squad players have been working hard, honing their skills and staying ready for the call-up. Elevating a player from the practice squad can provide much-needed depth and give the team more options during the game. Regardless of who ends up on the field, the tight ends will need to contribute in multiple ways. They must be effective as both blockers and receivers, showcasing their versatility. The ability to switch between roles seamlessly will be key to the Broncos' success as they navigate this challenging situation. Adding to the challenge is the Buccaneers' defense, which is known for its ability to shut down opposing tight ends. The Broncos will need to find creative ways to scheme their tight ends open, using a variety of plays and formations to keep the defense guessing. This will require precise execution and a high level of coordination among the players and coaching staff. Section 7 Defensive Line Depletions Can the reserves hold the line? The Broncos' defensive line depth will be put to the test with Draymond Jones, out due to a knee injury. His absence leaves a significant void in the pass rush, requiring others to step up. McTelvin A. Jim and Matt Henningsen will be tasked with filling Jones's shoes and generating pressure on Tom Brady. The Broncos will need a strong performance from their interior defensive line to contain the Buccaneers' run game and force Brady into uncomfortable situations. Look for the Broncos to utilize creative blitz packages and stunts to create pressure and disrupt the Buccaneers' offensive rhythm. Section 8. Linebacker Limbo, Searching for Stability With Josie Jewell sidelined due to a hamstring injury, the Broncos face a challenge in the middle of their defense. Alex Singleton and Jonas Griffith will likely share the responsibilities at inside linebacker. Their ability to communicate effectively and maintain gap integrity will be crucial against the Buccaneers' versatile offense. The Broncos will need their linebackers to be disciplined in their assignments and avoid giving up big plays. Coverage responsibilities will be paramount, as the Buccaneers boast a talented group of pass-catching running backs and tight ends. Section 9. Secondary Concerns – A Test of Depth the Broncos' secondary remains relatively healthy, but the unit will be tested against the Buccaneers' talented wide receivers. Patrick Certain II and Damari Mathis will have their hands full with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Justin Simmons and Caden Stearns, the starting safeties, will need to provide support over the top and limit big plays. The Broncos' secondary will need to be physical at the line of scrimmage and disrupt the timing of the Buccaneers' passing game. Communication and trust will be key for the Broncos' defensive backs to hold up against Tom Brady and company. Section 10. Special Teams Shuffle Impact Players Sidelined The Broncos will also be without key special teams contributors. Wide receiver Kendall Hinton and safety PJ Locke are both inactive due to hamstring and ankle injuries respectively. Their absence will require adjustments on coverage units and potentially impact the return game. The Broncos will need to rely on their depth to fill these roles and maintain a high level of execution on special teams. Field position and hidden yardage can be crucial in a close game, making special teams contributions all the more important. Section 11. Final Thoughts – Navigating the Storm in Tampa The Broncos face an uphill battle against the Buccaneers, particularly with a lengthy list of injuries impacting key contributors. The team has been hit hard, with several starters sidelined, making the challenge even more daunting. The Buccaneers, known for their aggressive play and strong defense, will not make it easy for the Broncos. However, this presents an opportunity for other players to step up and prove their worth. The backups and less experienced players will have a chance to shine and show that they can handle the pressure of a high-stakes game. This is their moment to demonstrate their skills and contribute to the team's success. The Broncos' depth will be tested, and their ability to adapt and execute will be crucial to their success. The coaching staff will need to be strategic, making quick decisions and adjustments to counter the